wanted to turn to the eyewitness, one of the eyewitnesses. Um, we see people uh, from the cell phone footage who are filming. He was right there. Uh, he went on CNN's Chris Cuomo show last night and described what he saw. Part that makes the least sense, did any of the cops, did you hear them talking to each other about why they couldn't just move him and get him out of the situation? <laughs> bro, they wanted to kill that man, bro. <laughs> like, I'm being honey, bro. They didn't speak. They didn't say nothing. The, the view was in his eyes, bro. The man that had his, his knee on his chest, bro, he knew what he was doing. His shimmies in my man's neck, bro, he knew what he was doing. It's just like having a jiu-jitsu choke. If I'm here, I'm shimmying, I'm shimmying, I'm shimmying, I'm shimmying, boom, my choke's on there. I told him it was a blood choke. He knew it was a blood choke. He looked at me when I said it. He put his head down. He did not make any more gestures. He did not say any other thing. And the two other cowards that was on the other side of the the, the, uh, the car, I didn't know nothing about. I didn't know about it until I got videos in my social media and things like that. So they were the intent to smother my man and kill my man. And I seen it. I seen it in his eyes. I seen it in his demeanor. And I seen it in their movement. And Officer Tao, didn't, he didn't partake in it but he had control of what was going on on the other side of that car for me not to see what was going on. Because the people that know me personally know how I am. And I'm, I'm very good. I'm a controlled athlete. I'm a controlled person. You know, I have different levels to who I am. And I show my controlness out there in front of the world. I got letters, notes from multiple people that know me from growing up in the city that said I was the most controlled they ever seen in my life. As I'm seeing another man that looked like me, that feels like me, that got the same complexion as me, lose his life. To another man that had no senseless, he had no feeling, he had no remorse, he had <laughs> in him, he had no feeling. I don't even think he had a heart at that moment. And he's gonna feel that for the rest of his life. Just like I'm gonna hear my man say this, I can't breathe, I want my mama. And I'm coming to find out that this man who died two years on the day that his mom died, I'm a mama's boy, bro. Like that <laughs> hurts me deep down inside, bro. And like something needs to be done, or something needs to be done. That was eyewitness Donald Wil Williams describing the killing of George Floyd. Um, Nakima Levy Armstrong, as you hear this, and the family is demanding murder charges be brought against all four officers. Um, right now, parts of Minneapolis, southern Minneapolis, are in flames. Um, your final thoughts on what needs to happen at this point? What needs to happen is that charges need to be brought immediately against the four officers who killed George Floyd. There is simply no justification for what they did or why they did it. And people have to wake up and understand that as black people, we do not feel safe in the city of Minneapolis. We do not feel safe in the state of Minnesota. We do not feel safe around this country when it comes to our interactions with law enforcement. And like he said, that needs to change, and it needs to change now. Okay. And the other video footage that we have seen and that we haven't seen, one from Dragon Walk across the street, in the, the store footage, um, the police officers claim that uh, he was resisting arrest, but we see him coming out of the car. We see the police officers um, holding him. They um, handcuff him. They walk him across the street, and that's when they take him down. Uh, can you explain this? There is no explanation. And I think that People need to shift their focus on from whether he was resisting arrest or not. That has nothing to do with the fact that they uh, compressed that man's body, put the full weight of a human body on his neck, and snuffed the life out of him. For something like we eight have to minutes. Absolutely. Who, who can justify that? That was a modern-day lynching. N no other words for that. That was a modern-day lynching. So people have to realize what they witnessed, be honest about it, and push for accountability, and not allow them to use technicalities as a way to justify what happened to George Floyd. It doesn't matter about his past. It doesn't matter whether he was resisting or he didn't. It doesn't matter what happened in the store. What matters is that those officers had a chance to ensure 
that George Floyd could live and not die, that he could breathe and not suffocate or have whatever kind of response to his body that happened. He should be alive today to tell his story. They took that away from him and they should be held accountable. This is Floyd's brother, Felonis, speaking on CNN Tuesday. I love my brother. Everybody loves my brother. Knowing my brother is to love my brother. They could have tased him. They could have maced him. Instead, they would they put their knee in his neck and just sat on him and didn't care at all. He screamed, Mama, Mama, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And they didn't care. So I don't, I don't, I just don't understand what more we gotta go through in life, man. They didn't have to do that to him. George Floyd's brother, Felonis speaking on CNN on Tuesday. Benjamin Crump, now the family attorney, has already filed a lawsuit against Minneapolis. We will continue to follow this story. We want to thank Nakima Levy Armstrong, civil rights attorney, activist, founder of the Racial Justice Network, former president of the Minneapolis chapter of the NAACP, for being with us.